Welcome back to Bourbon Country Reacts. Hey everybody, whenever you do that, that three, two, it's almost like we're getting ready to start a band. One, a one, two, yeah, three. that's what I'm saying. He does that right before we start. And this is Keith, he's the bourbon music guy. That power chord. Wow. Oh, do it. Wow. Show me your air guitar. I got slam an air guitar, man. Do it. I can play Master of Puppets. Bum, 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 bum. I'm bum, Dustin, bum, I'm your bum, bourbon bum, guy. We got another box. Another box? Yeah. Are you done okay. playing already? Man, I was going to give you the whole concert. Let's go. The, the I think we, we'll just hold off on this bribe and you should just show people your air guitar this whole video. So what do you think, man? The set list from the Injustice for All tour? Sure. All right, we got to start. We got to open with Blackened. Okay. No, Do it. <laughs> I'm watching. Y'all watching, right? I don't think they want to sit and watch me hum air guitar for like two and a half hours. <laughs> it would be great for <laughs> five seconds. It, it'd likely go viral. Look how stupid this guy is. It could. <laughs> Keep going. No. All right. So we got another box. Well, this one's fancy too. Easier to get off the top off. So we got a Chestnut Farms. It has a horse engraved on the yeah. label. We've had a Chestnut before. We have. Not yeah. that one, though. Not it didn't come one. in a fancy box. Correct. This one is... Uh, Bottles and bond. Oh, okay. So you can't play the proof game. No, it's obvious. It's a hundred proof. Everything bottled and bond is a hundred proof. Hundred proof on the dot. Yeah. Um. So I'm not. And this is from Aimless One, by the way. Oh, okay. Thank you. So I'm not sure that um, this is a country song. No. Is he breaking the rule? Are you breaking the rules? <laughs> well. I guess if you got really technical, this could fall into three genres. I could see it being considered country. Really? I could see it being considered folk. Oh. And I could see it being considered rock. Okay. That's, but it's, that's a lot. It's Janis Joplin. Oh. So Dustin has no exposure to Janis Joplin. Well, I gave him some exposure a few weeks ago when he admitted he didn't know anything about Janis. Me and Bobby McGee. This song is not one that I displayed for him, which is probably her vocal masterpiece. What? Yeah. So that's interesting because Keith's like, I don't know that that's a country song. And I'm like, okay, well, he gave us another song we can do. He's like, no, we're going to do it. <laughs> it's like, okay. We're going to do it because... I. If we're bending the rules a little here, I think it's going to be worth it for you to hear full Janice. Janice doing Janice stuff? this is full freaking Janice. You're setting the bar pretty high. Yeah, well, you tell me, dude.
a little more raw. <laughs> the 60s hippie dancing fun. A little bit. And the goofballs up there with it. Point Dexter's in a tie at a jazz jump. <laughs> and he's shaking it. Look at it. Dude's probably a record executive. Dude was wearing a Mercedes hood ornament, which is funny because of her song, Lord Won't You Buy Me a Mercedes Benz. He did play that one for me. Yeah. So that's full Janice. So Aimless One requested the live version. Mm-hmm. The studio version vocally is a little more powerful. That's what I wondered. Because she, she was playing the audience a lot. She, she invited half freaking audience up on stage. Right. So. But she still showed what she had. Y- yeah. So Janice's unique ability was to be super pitch perfect and melodic and soft. And go to full distortion, melt your face belt. Yeah. Like zero to a hundred and nothing. She did that. She did it five or six times in that song. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and I've never heard anyone like her since her. Makes sense. Um, You could tell uh, she's having a good time. She she was. Looked like the crowd was having a good time, too. All the Poindexters in their ties. That was weird. And that was some I'm I'm like, where? I like some of those guys. uh, Wow. (laughs) I want to know where that concert was that they had all the all the 50s dress dudes. That's a good question. Salt Lake City? You're not going to like this. You didn't try to yet, right? Yeah. It's not going to like it. Well, do you like it? Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Why do you like it, Keith? So this one's pretty wild. It's um, got this citrus note that runs from start to finish. Yep. And it's also oak forward. Yep. And, but like a sweet oak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not like a bitter oak. There's like a touch of cinnamon in in the up front but barely we're what getting a, more caramels and vanillas i am too a, a, along with kind of the oak forward and a touch of citrus the uh this is one of the better oak finishes i've had in a while it's a very oaky finish yeah and it's it kind of just lasts I, but it's pleasant it's like it doesn't so a lot of bitter oaks kind of roll to the very back of your tongue and sit there and they're good but this one sits just forward of the back of your tongue. It sits from the middle of your tongue back, and it, the finish is super persistent. Yeah. So one thing about a really persistent finish like that is that it does not call you back to the glass. Right, you just want it to chill. So this is a really good slow sipper that you want to, you know, just... Pour a double savor. and you'd be good for a couple hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A couple hours. You, you, like, you'd take a sip, let it sit. It'd sit for a couple minutes, take another sip. Yeah. And I want to try a big sip with this. Because I've been taking super tiny. Okay. And I think I've taken a little bit bigger sips. I'm going to go with tiny sip. T- 
totally different drink. Totally different drink with a bigger sip. Yeah, it's... Mm. So with the tiny sip, I'm surprised you didn't call it the melon. It's got melon right up front. So when I took the big sip, yeah, I got gobs of melon. I what? didn't get it in the tiny. That's weird. I got the uh, florals and the citrus oak. Citrus and the citrus. And, yeah. Yeah. Or not floral, citrus. Or I didn't get any florals in this, sorry. Uh, the citrus. In the tiny sip, I got the citrus. And the big sip, that changes over to uh, melon and corn sweet. How big of a sip did you take? Just now, a pretty big one. Pretty good size? Big enough that I don't want to take another one that big. So, that's an interesting comment. Because most of the flavors in this are pretty powerful, but it's not smooth. No, it it tastes probably 105, even was, though we know it's 100. I was going to say 115. I don't think it's that hot. To me, it, it, like, it lit me up at first. Uh, I was surprised, but I kind of liked it. It was like, it was nice. It, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about this bottle. Nothing negative at all. I'm not saying negative stuff. I'm just saying it was hotter than I expected. Okay, that may be the one minor complaint. It's, it's not a complaint. I like not, it. It's not smooth, but Dustin's kind of enjoying the burn there. I mean, sometimes you like to know you're drinking something. Well, and that goes back to the... It doesn't call you back to the glass. It's still enjoyable, though. Exactly. So this is, in my mind, is just like Dustin said, pour a double, sip and savor that thing for the next two, two and a half hours. Easy. And you'll be perfectly content the if whole time. If you're Keith, you'll watch cartoons while you're doing it. I will. I watch a lot of cartoons. I do. I know. Uh, I'm not sure I have much else to say about this bottle. There's not a lot on here. Uh, you already know the proof. Um, and what more can you say about Janice? Janice is Janice. Right. I mean, that's just... That's true. This tiny little pack of dynamite that blows your face Boom. off. Boom. You don't expect it either. <laughs> right. She's, she's like, where the hell did that voice come from? <laughs> is she possessed? She might should, be possessed. should I tell them the story that, uh, that I got when I was watching that interview about the, the Monterey Pop Festival? Yes. All right. So this is secondhand. Um, and I got it. I was watching some documentary and they spent about in whatever documentary it was, they spent about maybe 15, 20 minutes on Janice. And apparently before the Monterey Pop Festival, which was almost as big as Woodstock. Um, I love this story, by the way. He's told it to me twice. He forgot the first time. A lot of the um, a lot of the artists were in this bar just having fun, so they're going up on stage and kind of impromptu. The big artists that everybody knew. Yeah, they're up, they're playing. You know, they do a song or two, and, and somebody. It was, it was full of. The what? room was full of studio executives. Right, nobody else could have a seat there. Now there were other people there, but you think? The, the room was full of studio executives. Okay. And I, I can't remember who, so that we're getting this from a studio executive in this documentary. And uh, this little thing walks up on stage. Janice. And everybody's like looking at her like, what are you? What are you going to do? And then she sang a song, and I don't remember which one it was. Might have been me and Bobby McGee. May have been this one. And the guy says, you could hear a pin drop. In that bar for the next minute solid. In the bar. <laughs> it's a bar. It's pretty loud. Janice just shut them all down. And I imagine there was a mad rush to the stage with sign this contract. Hey, uh, what are you doing later? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I always thought that story was funny. Um, and uh, uh, whatever that documentary was had some great quotes in it too. Like one guy was talking about Karen Carpenter. He's like, yeah. She could sing the phone book and it'd, it'd sell platinum. You know, it's just like... <laughs> He's not wrong. No, but, that's yeah. accurate. So, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Drop down in the comments. Tell us what country music we need to check out. Tell us what North American whiskey we need to try. And we'll see you next time. See you.